Our guest right now is Amy Goyer, who has been a caregiver even before she was really an adult enough to do so. Her journey for caregiving has been long. She will say may be challenging and rewarding at the same time. She is a national caregiving expert who's written tons of publications and a book about the experience, and she is joining us right now. Thank you, Amy Goyer, for your time. It's good to reconnect with you once again. Wonderful. It's really good to see you again, Renee. What is the typical profile of a caregiver? I know that's changing. We've been reading and hearing stories about millennials who are providing more and more care for their aging parents, but what's the typical profile and maybe even gender? Right, so um, we we do have caregivers in every single generation now. Gen Z, millennials, Gen Xs, right now, uh, baby boomers are the largest segment of caregivers, um, and that. But the Gen Xers are coming right up and being pretty pretty close. We still have some silent or greatest generation caregivers too. So don't forget, we've got many many people in their 80s, even their 90s, caring for a spouse, caring for a sibling, and they need support as well. Um, we do know that about 60 percent roughly are female and, and about 40 percent are, are male. Um, we know that people are caring for all kinds of uh, people with all kinds of health conditions. We know that um, they're caring for folks with dementia. About 60 percent of family caregivers are working. And that's an important point, Renee, because if we're working, we take on caregiving can be like a whole nother job. You know, it, it can be uh, something that takes up so much time and yet we're working full time or even part time. It's, it, it's really a struggle, but we need that income and we need it for our own financial security when we're caregivers. So I think that's really important to pay attention to. We have a lot of uh, veteran family caregivers. And, uh, you know, we, we are caring for veterans, but about 60% of those who are veterans who may be eligible some, for some supports from the VA are not taking advantage of them. About half are not using them. So, you know, we need to, to look into that as well. The VA was a great support for me when I was caring for my dad. He was a World War II and Korean War veteran. Hmm. And there were, we got home-based primary care from the VA, and we had help with paying for incontinence supplies and medical equipment and all sorts of things. So, uh, you know, look at your veteran caregivers. I think, you know, the, the big thing that we need to think about is that family caregivers are providing so much care. We are the backbone of the long-term care system in this country. And the value of that is about $600 billion. $600 billion dollars. In the state of Kentucky alone, the value of the care that 610 family caregivers, 610,000 family caregivers provide about 570 million hours of care. And the economic value of that is $8.6 billion just in the state of Kentucky. And that is unpaid service that's being rendered, that's right? right? Those are right. family and right. friends who were volunteering that right. amount of time. That is equivalent to a full-time job and then some, right? 60-something hours a week uh, is, is average, perhaps even more. Um, for those who, you know, they're starting off and they, they are curious about, well, what if mom or dad get to a point where I cannot provide the in-home care? What would mm -hmm. you advise them do? What should they be seeking out? Okay, so only about three or four percent of people are cared for in assisted living or nursing homes. It's a small fraction. The vast majority of people are either cared for in their own home or their loved one's home. And so the first thing when you start thinking, I don't know if I can do this anymore, look into what help is available at home first, because the cost of care is unbelievably high. The cost of care in uh, facilities is something that people just don't have any concept of until you really start looking at it. Across the nation, uh, if you have someone go to an adult daycare center, for example, five days a week, that's going to cost about $19,000 a year. And there are adult daycare centers around the country, even some in rural areas. About $59,000 a year if you have a home care a homemaker coming in to help uh, at 44 hours a week. About $62,000 a year if you have a home health aide who has a little bit more training. 
An assisted living facility is gonna cost about 54,000. Now this is national averages. In your local area, it may be slightly different. So it's always good to do the research. But in a nursing home, $95,000 a year. And a nursing home with your own, room, you know, with no roommate, $108,000 a year. That, those are the national averages. So first of all, Again, contact that area agency on aging. Ask about home and community-based services, which may include adult daycare, which is generally a lot less expensive than paying for one-on-one -on -one care at home. And find out, you know, what Meals on Wheels might be available. Is there uh, someone who can do a medication reminder? Is there a way we can use technology to keep our loved ones safe at home? Can we do some home modifications and, and make sure they're living all on one floor and aren't navigating stairs? If none of those, you know, you get to a point where that can't happen, the first thing to do is really get the lay of the land of what's available close to where you live as the caregiver. The stress of caregiving. Uh, we talked about this before when we spoke a few years ago in 2018 about it. one of the things that you had said or written is that it's hard to be a caregiver if you don't take time to care for yourself. And we know that the physical and emotional toll and maybe even social isolation that comes with caregiving for those who are doing that. Talk to us about that and what techniques should caregivers be practicing when it comes to self-care? I think in terms of self-care, I moderate a Facebook group for AARP. It's uh, the AARP Family Caregivers Discussion Group. And we have about 18,000 members. And so much of what goes on in that group is support for each other. You can do this. You know, people will post, I can't do this anymore, or I'm so frustrated and I'm so stressed out and I'm so burnt out. And they'll get that support to say, okay, how can we help? What can we do? And, and you can do this, you know, that, emo that moral support. And many caregivers feel so isolated, they don't have that kind of social support. So you can at least find it in an online group. And that's definitely better than nothing, although there's no, you know, no, no thing that can replace a hug mm -hmm. in person. But you can get some virtual hugs. Well, thank you, Amy. Uh, certainly, this has been such an enriching conversation. I hope helped someone else as they take this caregiving journey along with so many others, uh, thousands, hundreds of thousands across this nation who are doing that incredible, rewarding work. Thank you so very much for sharing your story and your expertise with us. Oh, thank you so much for having me. And, and be sure to visit aarp.org caregiving for more information for family caregivers. Thank you, Amy.